Hello from Gardening at Dwensa here in Ireland and you are very welcome to this belated greenhouse update video. So, so many people have been asking me what's happening with the greenhouse, can you do us an update? So today is the day, today is the day we're going to do a greenhouse update. And from right to left, we're just going to do a very slow pan of the greenhouse, which has recently been tidied up, and more about that in a few minutes. But I had to do a tidy up of the greenhouse before the bub bubble wrap came off. You can see all that bubble wrap up above, which I would really like to have taken off, but it really is too early. And in just a few minutes, we'll be looking at the top staging here on the right. We'll be having a look at the bottom staging down here. We'll be also having a look at the plants down here on the floor. We'll also be taking a look at my glorious epiphyllums here in the centre of the aisle. We won't be going down the back where it's a bit messy. And we'll also have a look at the protea and other giant beauties I have here on the left of the greenhouse. Boo Boo, as you can see, is really happy to welcome you to her greenhouse. Okay, let's get on with the greenhouse tour. And I'm going to start off by giving you just a little pan of the staging to the right of the greenhouse, where I have the plants that are looking their best at the top and we don't have a whole lot of blooms at the moment but we do have a number of interesting leaves which is always good and very worthwhile in a greenhouse it's not all about the flowers you know i guess what's interesting is that a number of things are actually coming into flower kind of unassuming at the moment but still nice we have buds on this cute little ripsalis and soon they will open and we do have a smattering of succulent spikes. This one here is looking really promising. Nice big juicy buds. Don't they look promising? Just to the right of them we have some Sparaxis bulbs that I picked up really cheaply from a supermarket. And they have grown so wonderfully. I just hope that I get flowers soon. I don't see any sign of the buds yet but I'm going to be hopeful for this. Really, really cheap they were too. Some more little buds coming. The pinky ones there on that Ripsalis-like thing. I'm not quite sure, but the name will go up on the screen. And some more of these really, really, really tall spikes beside the epiphyllum. This epiphyllum is just going over, at least the bud on the left is. And my label says Marseillaise, but I wonder did I get the labels mixed up when I repotted. And directly below it, we have the first of the peanut cactus blooms to try to open. I just love these cute little things. And do you see the brownie lumps beside it? Well, these are also buds that are about to come. They look a bit ugly first, but if you know they're buds, they're not ugly at all. And to the right, we have another set of nice looking plants. Do you see that one there at the back? I'll just zoom in and show you. So this is a no ID succulent that I was given as a present. And can you see, it's got these tiny, tiny little pink flowers here, which are <laughs> such a welcome bonus. Dudleya is looking great on the left as usual. And then swinging over, I'm going to go up now and show you this epiphyllum called Jungle Nights, which isn't actually in flower, but it is covered in beautiful, very, very long buds that look pinkish. And I can't wait for this one to open up. At the very front, we have, I guess, just a selection of small things that are proving their worth with their foliage. But oh yeah, does anybody remember me unboxing these bulbs not very long ago? This is Rhodohypoxus Fairy Kisses and we can see some little buds just coming just over there 
and I can't wait to see the flowers on this little sweetie. To the right of it we have my Gastrolia Green Ice and isn't that looking super? I really really love this cultivar and what greenhouse tour could be complete without mention of Echeveria Compton's Carousel just there on the left with its beautiful green and cream blooms. Now I'm really hoping that the plant will produce rosettes this year that aren't completely cream because obviously if something is that variegated it has no chlorophyll and can't survive on its own. So if it will produce some rosettes that have green in them as well, that have chlorophyll in them as well, then I can propagate a few of them. And the pelagonium on the right is the famous Ardens, which has flowered, has produced several flowers, but <laughs> it doesn't want to show you any flowers at the moment. I do see a cluster of buds though. And over here we have my mountain papaya, which is that tall, tall stem that we're traveling up of. And wouldn't it be great if I got papayas some year? Well, that's what my daughter thinks anyway. But for the moment, it's a nice ornamental plant. So let's have a look at the lower staging, the lower shelving here in the greenhouse. And over there in that far corner you can see the courgettes which my daughter recently sowed and they aren't up yet but they will be soon. And in front here we have various seedlings. We have double snapdragons there at the back and Stipa tenuissima there at the front. The less advanced of the two trays I have and over here we have lots and lots of verbascum. It really is time to prick out these verbascum. They are rapidly outgrowing the small space that they're in. Further to the left we have more Stipa tenuissima. These ones were sowed earlier so they're bigger and some aeoniums that I sowed at the back and then on the left we have some more exotic seedlings. These are mostly Veltimia and if Michelle Finn is watching, yes Michelle, I have one for you. Behind we have the French beans that I sowed in a video not very long ago and just to the left we have lots and lots of Ansette bananas. These are the Ansette that I propagated the year before last, autumn before last, and I've just cut back all of their bad leaves, so that's why they're looking so small, but I'm hoping now when I pot them on this year, they'll just really get going with a big whoosh. We have Asclepius just to the left, seedling sent to me by my good friend Dimitri in Switzerland, and then just to the left of that, we have my Disa orchids. And I think I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight buds so far. So hopefully there'll be lots of Disa's in flower in the greenhouse before very long. The staging continues to the left of the Disa's with a lot of succulents that have been put down here because they're not doing a whole lot. Just waking up some of them now at this stage and down at the very back there, well it's just more succulents really. On the floor we have lots and lots of dahlias. I think I really have too many dahlias. So now we're moving down from the lower shelving to the floor just in front of the shelving where we saw those dahlias just a second ago and if you look carefully there you can see my heater underneath the staging. And here we have mostly my South African bulbs. Noreen's on the left there and I think we're into Hymanthus now at this stage just panning slowly up here some of them still asleep and the parent Veltimia she's looking very full and leafy at the moment and then over to the left we have more Hymanthus passing by my Buffon that's asleep 
and just finishing at the top there with the agave. This is my largest agave, Medio Picta, and it's just kind of coming to after the winter. On our left hand side as we come into the greenhouse we have one of my monsters and this is a Brugmansia sanguinea which has flowered beautiful orange flowers for a long time over the winter. It was absolutely covered in them and it has become a real and true monster in every sense. Look how tall it is and I'm going to have to do something about it this year. At its feet we have the aeoniums that I kind of cut off and stored like this over winter and many of them are regrowing roots. I think I only lost about two of the cuttings so that's really good news. Behind we have Canna musifolia, we have an alocasia and we have an Ancete banana. And just to their right we have the sago palm which somebody was asking about recently. So this is my sago palm that I've had for many, many years. A dinosaur of a plant that kind of grows in fits and starts. The leaves do seem a bit yellowish at the moment, but I'm hoping that'll sort itself out when it's not kept at minimal temperature and with minimal watering. The fronds on it remind me of, I don't know, big feather parasols that the ancient Egyptians would use to fan their queen. I have a vivid imagination as you can see. And above the Sikas and the Ancete we have my Sparmania which decided not to flower for me this winter. It's producing nice large big leaves at the moment need to keep it hydrated because they seem a bit limp but I think it's doing well just such a shame that it didn't flower and over here we have the king of the greenhouse it is in fact my king protea and this year we have a bumper flowering so you can probably see three blooms open here from this particular view. Going past their best buy now, we have a flower over here, which it has seen better days. We have this one here at the very top, and we have the third one that you spotted right over there. And in fact, I was worried I wouldn't get a chance to make a video before these flowers had gone over, so I took a little clip in a very cluttered greenhouse not very long ago and I'll just insert that here. I'm very pleased to tell you that my King Protea is fully, fully open. We have this large, magnificent flower. Just going in here so that you can see its full, full detail. Fabulous, fabulous thing. And I'm pleased to tell you that we have other flowers too. So over here, kind of hidden, is this one. Whoa! Come down here, come down here. This one isn't fully open yet. And then, moving left from the beauty I just showed you, we have another one. Oops, that's almost as fully and marvellously open as the one we just looked at, the first one we looked at. Look at that. Now the thing with these flowers is that they look fantastic, they look fantastic, and you're thinking, are they open fully? they open fully and then suddenly they're gone over so <laughs> I thought I'd just take you out here and have a good look at these while they're looking super yep it's a snail now I don't know exactly what he's doing because he's not eating the <laughs> the protea the leaves I guess are too tough <laughs> oh, look at him just waking up and looking around and saying, what's going on? Don't worry, little snail, I'll put you out in the garden. 
I mean, the thing about a garden is that there is so much there to keep all of the insects happy that we really don't need to, you know, go mad killing them or anything like that. Okay, if you have some small seedlings and you do need to protect them, that's one thing. But just to go mental for the sake of going mental because there's a snail, I think it's not very productive. I'm sure they serve some purpose. So as you heard from that clip, I was quite pleased with the flowering of my protea. But now that those three have gone over, what I'm also delighted about is that I have an additional two buds. This one here, which I won't take very long to flower at all, and one at the back. And here's the one at the back, so I'm going to have to find a way to show this off to best effect when it um, actually opens up. I'm really delighted with how well this King Protea has done this year. And I just hope I can go from strength to strength in terms of number of flowers. Now one thing that did bug me for a while was how to prune the plant. And I researched some information, but it was actually very hard to find this kind of information. Until I got in contact with a young YouTuber called Tom and Tom lives in South Africa and his mother grows an enormous number of proteas. I guess she's growing them for the cut flower industry but in any case Tom is a very active YouTuber and a very active horticulturalist and knows all about proteas and he was kind enough to say that he'd make a video for me on pruning proteas which I'll link to here. And I would like to take the opportunity to encourage you all to go and check out Tom's channel. It's called SA Homesteads, as in South African Homesteads. And he posts horticultural videos about a variety of topics. Very interestingly, lots of stuff about fine boss. He grows vegetables. He has fish and various other animals which I'm sure he'll share with you in the videos. So it's always really good to encourage young YouTubers and somebody with this much knowledge, so young, really deserves our support. So please go check out Tom's channel SA Homesteads and hit that subscribe button. And loath though I am to leave the proteas behind, we now have to travel further down the greenhouse here just to have a little bit of a glance at what's going on down there. And this is the scary end. This is the end where it's very difficult to navigate and get around. And that's because when I heard the crew was coming from nationwide the Irish television program to film the garden. I wanted them to get into the greenhouse and film the protea so I had to do a rehaul of the greenhouse before the bubble wrap actually came down and everything kind of got shunted here to the back so we're not going to go down there it's a bit of a mess. In the central aisle of the greenhouse, you will have noticed my epiphyllums, which are looking absolutely magnificent at the moment. And in fact, these were all in the bottom right hand corner where they overwintered. And they just came into glorious bloom, what you would literally call a hot mess because they were all completely jumbled up down there. And luckily I took a little clip just at that point in time, which I'll show you now. I came out to the greenhouse to water today and look at the abundance of blooms on my epiphyllums. I can hardly believe it. I knew I had buds, but I guess I kind of took my eye off the ball. It's hard to know where to start with filming this lot. It's just, oh, I don't know, a hot mess. Everything all intertwined and tangled up. And I guess really what happened is that they benefited really from the repotting I gave them last year. So this one is Fleshla, I think the label says, and it is a first flowering and a fabulous vibrancy of colours from a very hot pink to an almost red on the outer petals and it looks absolutely amazing. Now I'm scared, I don't know if I can get it out without breaking it. Okay, so I just, before I leave, want to show you 
what's out here in the forefront of all of this gluttony of epiphyllum blooms and do you see this funny little white thing here I wonder can anybody tell what it is and I'll let you know that this petal actually fell off there it is so it was part of this flower and this in fact is my handkerchief tree my Davidia but the one that flowers really really early and you can tell because look at the size of this it's very very small I think that branch may have died but this one still has a bud and it's so dangerously small I'm really scared to plant it out in the garden yet that um, you know I could put it somewhere where I wouldn't get damaged but look it wants to flower it's fantastic and this of course was a gift to me from Dimitri from the Green Nerd channel and thank you so much Dimitri so delighted it's a pity I missed it though really isn't it when it was uh, actually in full flower Well, it was difficult to see all of those epiphyllums down there, so they had to come out. So I moved them here to the front and I did lose some buds, but so it goes. The orange one to the left was the one that was really opening in the clip you just saw. And it is now fully opened and even just barely going over. But what a magnificent beauty it is and I think this one still has to be my favorite I love the streaks in those outer petals almost like it has a virus but no this is the natural coloring of this particular epiphyllum and last year I made a video about this particular one because even then I earmarked it as being my favorite epiphyllum and I'll link to that video at the very end but isn't she gorgeous I'm always completely gobsmacked by these plants. They have such, such ugly leaves, yet amazing flowers. This pink one is also pretty gorgeous. It's actually losing a lot of its pollen now at the moment, as you can see from the way it's kind of dusting the petals here. And I think this might be the first flowering for this particular one. Fleshler, it's called. Anyway, I'll write the name up on the screen. But yeah, I, it, it's, it's gorgeous, obviously it's gorgeous, but I think I will need to wait till next year to see it at its full advantage, at its full potential. And down here we have a mess of Ackermanii, and I do mean literally a mess. We have two plants here, and this is a very reliable one that has flowered for, for me for many years. <laughs> so hard to show it. But really ugly plant, but gorgeous, gorgeous flowers. I lost so many buds when I was trying to get this out of its entangled mess with all of the other epiphyllums. But you see, you know, it just produces a lot of flowers. Perhaps they're not as enormous as some of the other ones, but lots and lots of flowers certainly is something to be sought after. And I have other buds as well. Lots and lots of other buds but I'm sure I'll get a chance to show you them all in good time when they open. The other epiphyllum I wanted to show you is this funny little one here at the front with a long drooping habit and an abundance of small orange, orange juice coloured flowers. Lots of buds were knocked off this in the move but it's still looking pretty good. Isn't it a cutie? And in front of the epiphyllum, we have my Trevisia, which is just producing a new leaf. I did break off some bits of other leaves in the kind of general move, but no one there, for example. But yeah, it's looking good. I love the shape of the leaves on this one. It will make a big tree in time, but yeah, it is tender. And above the epiphyllums, we have, beside my flying pig, a tree fern. Looking magnificent and just unfurling now. 
and that brings me to the end of this video which I hope you enjoyed I'm just going to end up by giving you a complete 365 degree turn of the greenhouse now that I have some space to stand in it I hope you like this video if you did give it a thumbs up and if there's anything in particular that you wanted me to mention in the tour that I didn't then mention it and I'll be sure to bring it up in the next video. As always, thank you very much for watching and I hope you'll check back for lots more gardening, plant, exotic and ordinary plant fun. Have a great day. Bye.